In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Mighty faithful. So today, we begin the time of Advent. We start a new year. And to help us really benefit from it, from this time of Advent, I would like to comment on the short epistle that we have just read, epistle of St. Paul, in which this great apostle addresses the Romans, saying to them, this is a text of the, epi of the epistle, Brethren, knowing that it is now the hour for us to rise from sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we believed. The night is past and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and impurities, not in contention and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. So a short epistle, my dear faithful, but full of recommendations. And we can say that what we just read can be summarized in three main points, which will be the three directives to follow during this Advent time. So let's have a look to these three special words St. Paul is telling us in this beginning of Advent. And first, St. Paul tells us that it is now the hour for us to rise from sleep. So St. Paul is telling us, my brethren, wake up. Wake up. Wake up from sleep. And what is a sleep we need to wake up from? St. Thomas Aquinas explains it for us in his commentary on this passage. And you will see it's very interesting. And first, he tells us, this is not the sleep of nature, sometimes called death, as in the first epistle of the Thessalonians. We would not have you ignorant concerning those who are asleep, says St. Paul. So this is not the sleep of death. Sometimes it can be the repose of the animal powers, as we can see in St. John, about Lazarus. If he's asleep, he will recover. So this is not the sleep of nature. We need to wake up. Not death, not when we are lying in bed. Nor is it a reference to the sleep of grace, sometimes called the repose of eternal glory. As in the Psalm 4, 4 we can read, In peace I will lie down and sleep. So this is not heaven, no my dear faithful. Heaven will be the time of rest, finally, finally. Now, even though we won't sleep, our body won't sleep, but we will rest, my dear faithful. The true rest, the rest of the soul, the rest of the contemplation of God. This will be the true sleep, the true rest. And this true rest, St. St. Thomas, also can be started, initiated in his life by the rest of contemplation. As we can see in the book of song, I slept but my heart was awake. This is very interesting because perfect rest of the soul is heaven. The rest of the soul initiated, started in this life is prayer, is contemplation. What a, a beautiful definition of prayer, my dear faithful, because how many times we see it like a burden. Prayer is a burden. I need to pray because if I don't pray, I will go to eternal damnation. And that's absolutely not the case. Prayer is a rest, the true rest of the soul for St. Thomas. Because this is a moment when we regain our strength, our spiritual strength. The same way the sleep for our body is a moment we regain our 
natural strength. But this is not what St. Paul is talking about, says St. Thomas. Not the sleep of nature, not the sleep of grace. What is this sleep? We need to be wake up about it. This is the sleep of guilt. As we can read in Ephesians, awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, the spiritual death. Or the sleep of negligence, as in Proverbs, how long will you lie there, O sluggard? Am I faithful? These are the two sleeps we need to wake up during this Advent time. Sleep of guilt, that is, Sin, sleep of negligence. That is the lack, as St. Thomas will say, of acting with determination. And you know, this is so realistic in our spiritual life. How many times, you know, we want to change, we want to make penance, but without determination. So our Resolutions, I don't know, I will make an effort about my prayer life, I will make an effort to leave this occasion of sin, I will make an effort to, I don't know, fight against this vice, uh, to improve my charity life, whatever. And we take the resolution on Sunday after confession, Monday, we get it, Tuesday, we get it, Wednesday, we lost. Fight, penance, Without determination, though St. Paul is telling us during this time of Advent, penance and determination, constancy in time, at least until Christmas, my dear faithful. So this is the first point. We need to wake up, my dear faithful. Wake up by the spirit of penance and determination in our penance. Now, we get to the second point. St. Paul, in the, in the epistle details, mentioned some of the things we need to change. And he called them casting off the works of darkness. This is the second piece of advice. We need to make penance with determination, casting off the works of darkness. And St. Thomas explains to us, and the works of darkness are the sins, obviously, are the sins, but why St. Paul uh, called them the works of darkness? Here, the works of sin, says St. Thomas, are called works of darkness, first, because in themselves they lack the light of reason, with which man's works should be illuminated. The wise man has eyes in his head, says the Ecclesiastes, but the fool walks in darkness. This is very interesting, my dear faithful. What is the Holy Scripture telling us? What is St. Thomas telling us? That sin is foolish, is darkness, because the light of man, his, his reason, his intelligence, his understanding. What a sin? A sin is precisely a lack of intelligence, of understanding, because we know where we need to go. To head to heaven. We need to go to heaven. And we just take another path. So this is foolish. This is exactly that. They lack the light of reason. Their darkness. Second. They are performed in the dark. The eye of the adulterer waits for the twilight. Say Job. And here we have a very common strategy of the devil. He always wants us to sin in the dark. Privately, secretly, doing this sin in the dark. A lack of charity in the dark. Lack of justice, taking what's not mine in the dark. Works of darkness. Third, the sins are work of darkness because by them a person is brought to darkness. And St. Thomas quotes our Lord in St. Matthew, cast them into the darkness outside. And we know that this darkness is hell. is hell. So we understand why the sins are really the works of darkness. First, because 
They don't have the light of the understanding. They're foolish. The sin is foolish. Second, because they perform in the dark, the devil will always try to make a sin secretly. Nobody knows. Nobody's looking at you. And third, because they are obviously driving us to the eternal darkness. So my dear faithful, we need, during this time of Advent, to cast off the work of darkness. And I would like to quote, to tell you some of the work of darkness we maybe need to improve, to cast off from our life. Some examples. And everyone will know what he needs to really take off his life, from his life. Pride. Lack of charity. Murmuring, envy, impatience, excessive and repeated complaints, criticism, curiosity, excess in eating, drinking or sleeping, sensuality, excessive use of cell phones, of internet, dangerous TV programs, arriving late at mass, Escape from the duty of state, coarse vocabulary, lack of kindness in the family life, laziness at work, lack of regularity in prayer. And I, should, I could continue and continue, but I guess with these examples, everyone, and I include myself, everyone found something to improve in the spiritual life. So let's do it, mighty faithful. We need to cast off the works of darkness. We need to wake up and cast off the work of darkness. And finally, our Saint Paul gives us a, a beautiful recommendation so that we can really cast off the work of darkness. We need to put on the armor of light. We need to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. This is amazing, my dear faithful, this expression. Put on the armor of light. St. Thomas explained that these, this armor of light is a practice of the virtues. The same way the works of darkness were the sins, the armor of light that gives us strength against the devil is the virtue. And St. Thomas explains to us why putting the armor of light and putting on our Lord Jesus Christ is the same. Getting the virtues is the same as putting our Lord on our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the reason. In our Lord Jesus Christ, says St. Thomas, all the virtues were present most abundantly. We put on Jesus Christ first by receiving the sacraments. And he, squ he quotes... St. Paul to the Galatians. All you who have been baptized in Christ have put on Christ. This is beautiful, my dear faithful. Because what happens when we receive the, bapti the baptism or we receive the grace again in penance, we really receive a participation to the divine nature. We become adoptive sons of God. We become, we become other Christ, copies of our Lord Jesus Christ. We really put on ourselves the divine nature of our Lord. So this is absolutely incredible. And you know, we understand why the devil will do everything, everything to get your state of grace. Because he knows the value of the state of grace. We really put on our Lord Jesus Christ when we receive the state of grace. So by receiving the sacraments, first the baptism, then the confession, sacrament of penance, and also the Eucharist, even though the Eucharist we already put on our Lord Jesus Christ because we cannot receive the Eucharist if we are not in a state of grace. But you know what happened in every communion? This, you know, this armor of light that is the state of grace, that is our Lord Jesus Christ, becomes clearer, clearer and clearer. More shine in each communion. Because our Lord 
becomes more present in our soul. In each communion, more light, spiritual light, is infused in our soul, in each communion. So it, this is what we need to do during this time of Advent, my faithful. We need to wake up. Wake up. Spiritually talking, obviously. And you know, we are living in a world where the great majority of people are sleeping. You know, the, the proper thing of someone who is sleeping is in consciousness. And living in a dream. And living in a dream. Out of reality. The great majority of people, they are dreaming, my dear faithful. Out of reality. Because the only reality is what we are heading to. It's heaven. Two options. Heaven, hell. That's it. This is a reality. How many people are conscious about that? They are living in a dream. You know, sometimes it's really frightening to see that even though the, the evidence of the, the end of this dream is coming, they still want to live in the dream. I remember a case, you know, a person, he was told that he had only one year to live because of cancer. What he, did he do during this year? We're talking about a Catholic. I'm not talking about a pagan. Pagan will be normal. A Catholic. Spend the whole year in traveling, casinos. But the point, dream. And a dream that will turn in a, into a nightmare. When we arrive the last moment. So my dear faithful, we need to wake up. We cannot live in a dream. We need to live in reality. In our reality, we are heading to heaven. So, if we wake up, then we will cast off the works of darkness. Let's choose one or two, not more, one or two works of darkness to cast off from our life. But with constancy, until Christmas, without fading, with strength, for our Lord, for the love of God. And finally, during this time of Advent, Let's put on our Lord Jesus Christ by the frequent reception of the sacraments. Confession, communion, so that really, really we can have the soul prepared for the coming of our Lord at the end of Advent. And we can receive him in the night, on the day of Christmas, with a nice soul, with a shining soul. And we will rejoice his heart, the heart of the child Jesus, when he will we will be born in the grotta of Bethlehem. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.